You know, uh, our greatest need is to know God through faith in Jesus Christ. There's a scripture on from Galatians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. And this is Paul writing from the church in Galatia. We who are Jews by birth are not sinful Gentiles, nor a person who is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ, not by works of the law, because uh, by the works of the law, no one can be justified. And there's another scripture, Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified quickly by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, because our deepest need is spiritual, God sent his son to die on the cross to show his love for us and to conquer death so that he might demonstrate to us the reality of eternal life. Uh, we all know the scripture, John 3, 16. I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, we were redeemed and reconciled to God by the great redemptive work that Jesus did. Uh, at Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, say this, For God was so pleased to have his fullness dwell in him, Christ, Christ Jesus, and through him, through Jesus, to reconcile himself to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. That's Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood shed on the cross. So we were redeemed and reconciled to God by Jesus' sacrifice, that great redemptive work. Now, following this great redemptive work, which was accomplished by Jesus Christ, God sent his Holy Spirit into the church and into the world to invite non-believers to come to Jesus through faith so that they too might receive the gift of eternal life and become children and servants of God. Now, here's what Jesus said. Remember what I said. We've got the God so loved us, his only son, Jesus, who performed a redemptive act Right? After that redemptive act, Jesus dying on the cross and shedding his blood, God sent his Holy Spirit into the world and into the church so that uh, others, that we might be witnesses, so that others might receive the gift of eternal life and become servants of God. And here's what Jesus said to his disciples just before his ascension back to heaven. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here's my text for today. It comes from the book of Revelation. Revelation 27, I'm sorry, 22, verse 17. Remember, we've been talking this last month or so about the Holy Spirit. All right, this is Revelation 22, 17. The Spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes 
take the free gift of the water of life. Now, these words in my text declare that the purpose of the Holy Spirit and the church is to invite others to come to Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus, I just read it in, in uh, Revelation 22, 17, that there's something called a free gift of water, the water of life, that Jesus is the fountain of that water of life that we just read about. It said, let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Now, Jesus is the only one that can quench the thirst of your soul. Here's what Jesus said to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well, he said. It's in John 14. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Then later on, he said, this is in John 7, 37 through 39, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within me. By this he meant the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believe in him will receive up to that time. The Spirit has not been given since Jesus has not been glorified. So the scripture that Jean read this morning, if you read along with her, the scripture that Jean read this morning from Hebrews urges us to listen attentively and responsively to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us. I'm going to read again, Hebrews 3, 7 through 9. So as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not pardon your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they did what I said. So as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not pardon your hearts. Now, Jesus, what we're talking about here now is that, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit was sent into uh, the church so that we can then deliver the message to those who have not believed within Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus, in the closing days of his ministry, detailed some of the activities of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm going to talk about today. One of the primary functions of the Holy Spirit is to bear testimony to people's consciences regarding who Jesus Christ is and what he came to do. Uh, John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you. And in John 15, 26 it says, When the Advocate comes, when I say Advocate, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. When the Advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the, when the Habakkuk comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit will testify about Jesus Christ, why he came, and his work. And we just said earlier that he came for a redemptive work, to redeem us and reconcile us to God. Now, we need to listen to the Holy Spirit because he is a divine person. Right? We need to listen to the Holy Spirit because he's a divine person. I've said this before. The Holy Spirit is more than just an influence. He's more, he's, the Holy Spirit is more than just a power like magnetism electricity, or gravity. The Holy Spirit is the divine person of God. As a person, he speaks and communicates. The Holy Spirit uses various 
means of communicating with you. Let's talk about some of them. The Holy Spirit uses the Scriptures. First of all, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through his word. And the Holy Spirit, remember, is God. It's a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us through his word. He is the author of Scripture, and he illuminates Scripture to us. The more we know the Scripture, the more we read the Scripture, the more we think about the Scripture, the more we memorize the Scripture, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Holy Spirit uses the Scriptures to communicate with you. The Holy Spirit uses the church. Now, the church, I mean the body of Christ. Not Christ church, the body of Christ. The, the Holy Spirit uses the church. The Holy Spirit communicates to us through the church. In the book of Acts, for example, in the book of Acts, when, uh, when uh, uh, the church was in Antioch, when they were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Look at Acts chapter 13, verses 2 through 4. Acts 13, 2 through 4. While they were worshiping, we're talking about the church in Antioch. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off to them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and sailed there from Cyprus. So the Holy Spirit, which the Scriptures, communicates us through Scripture. The Holy Spirit communicates to us through the church. The Holy Spirit uses individual believers as his spokesperson. So here's how that can happen. Let me you how that can happen. So God puts a uh, Bible verse on one side into the mind of a person, and immediately that person knows that that message that they get is for someone else. So, in obedience and the sense of urgency that they receive, that person then, they believe again, goes and shares what they receive from the Holy Spirit. Now, they can share it in person, they can share it on the telephone. They can share it by text. They can share it by email. But the Holy Spirit uses individual believers as spokespersons. So if you get a, 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 a thought or something that you, that you think out of the blue, or you something and it comes out of the blue, that's the Holy Spirit in you. And share the scripture with him or share something with him. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to another person through you. The Holy Spirit also uses events of life to sometimes interrupt our thoughts and to speak to us. God permits. Circumstances in our lives that mature us and cause us to grow in our faith. There's a scripture in First Peter uh, one, six and seven. In all this, you greatly rejoice, that though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So the Holy Spirit speaks through people, other people, and speaks through you, speaks through the Scripture, and speaks through your so keep your 
eyes open and your ears open. When circumstances occur that you think of bad things, what may be a stumbling block may in fact be a seven. Be aware. The Holy Spirit speaks to those people. As we develop our personal relationship with God, we will understand that God loves us and we can care for us and we can trust Him even in difficult circumstances. We can trust God with every aspect of life. And he uses every aspect of life. You know, there's a favorite verse we like to always quote. Everything works together for good for them to love the Lord and the Lord according to your purpose. Well, okay. In places where, where it may be difficult circumstances, think about it. Or look what God in the Holy Spirit may be trying to tell you or show you. Sometimes our circumstances can take us out of our comfort zone, but always is God's presence. We believe God's presence is all with you. Well, the scripture, for no scripture, we like that the scripture is quote. The first time, quote.
Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit who comforts us and guides us into all truth. It's the Holy Spirit who reminds us of your words, your command, reminds us of your goodness, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to walk in love and obedience. Thank you, Father, for sealing us with your spirit as an assurance that we are your children and that you will never leave or forsake us. It's your spirit who fills us with the love, your love, that we may grow in wisdom and in knowledge of your love so that we can then demonstrate your love and be a blessing to the world. We're thankful, Father, and we're blessed that your spirit dwells inside of us, and our desire is to always be in fellowship with you and to experience your wonderful presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, pardon me, some people here, if you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you may be shocked, shocked today to learn that the Holy Spirit is inviting you to become a believer in Christ. The Holy Spirit comes to convince you that, that the sin of unbelief is the sin that separates us from God, separates man from God. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit that can convince a person of the sinfulness and their need. And you need to stop rejecting God's love. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't come to convict you and to convince you of your unsaved and lost condition just to make you feel bad or feel negative about yourself. The Holy Spirit comes to convert you from unbelief to belief, from rejection to acceptance. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can take, you know, we get have x-rays for the inside of our body. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can take an x-ray of your heart and your soul and reveal to you your lost condition. The Holy Spirit does this to attract you and persuade you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So, I'm saying to you today, Yes, and I wrote this down, so I want you to understand this. Listen to the Holy Spirit now. Hope the Holy Spirit invites you to receive Jesus Christ today because nowhere in God's Word do you find encouragement to believe in Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and the gift of a new life. Today is the day of salvation. Like it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, where it says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day God wants to forgive your sins. Today is the day God wants you to become his child. Today is the day Christ wants to give you the gift of eternal life. Today is the day that the peace of God can be yours. The Holy Spirit is inviting you to come to him today. Come to him today while you have the opportunity. As I mentioned, nowhere in the world does it say your tomorrow. It says today is the day of salvation. So if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, remember, you know, I'm going to give you something you can say. Uh, use your own words. We want you to remember this. Saying a, a prayer, using the words I'm going to give you, or any prayer, does not save you. What saves you is believing in Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. I'm simply giving you a way to express to God 
your faith in him. And they thank him for your salvation. So when you say something like this, use your word. Say something like this. God, I know that I have sinned against you and deserve punishment, but I believe Jesus Christ took the punishment I deserve so that through faith in him I could be forgiven. I receive your offer of forgiveness and place my trust in you for salvation. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Thank you for your wonderful grace and your forgiveness. And thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you did that, you said something like that, you've done what, what it says in Scripture, and I quote this every, every Sunday, but if you've done this, use words like this. Here's what you've done. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the, from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If you've done this, let somebody know. Don't keep it secret. Let somebody know. No. Let me know by saying, um, leave a comment in on Facebook Live or YouTube or call us. Let somebody know. All right, I'm going to pronounce a benediction. We're going to sing our post news, and then I'm inviting you to come out and join us on the patio. We're going to have some good food, and we're going to celebrate the October birthdays.